Level three, this is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. Thanks to um, Mr. Rob Vino for kicking with us. Tony Finn's going to step up and in in a couple of minutes. So uh, can the Masters. Everybody thought that, uh, you know, Sc- Scotty Scheffler was the player to beat. He was plus 450, plus 400, plus 450 um, before the tournament started. And here we are right now. Scotty Scheffler's plus 137. We played two uh, two days of golf in Augusta. Two unusual days of golf in Augusta. I've seen rain before there, and they have to stop, or it gets too dark, and, oh, there's lightning. And then it's nice after. I can't, this is like the windiest Masters ever type deal. Like, those flags, like, it's seriously gusting, and it's been a challenge for the players out there. It hasn't been easy. It's already a difficult course to play. I know you throw the weather into it. I think it's even things out a little bit. I think Scheffler would probably would have pulled away, but you weren't here last night. And I said last night, I said, no one's going to catch Scheffler. Scheffler's going to win the tournament. And I said, but the one guy, I said, guys, the one guy that catches my eye on the board here at 16 to one is my guy, Max Homa. And, and, and here, there, and it went on that big run today. Max Homa is plus 550 right now. Credit to Bryson Cam that he hung in here today after a couple of Aaron shots. I keep waiting for him to melt down and fall apart, but he hasn't yet. What are your thoughts on the top of the board here with these three? Well, Gabe, I think you bring up a really good point about Max Homa. If there was anybody that has the mindset to play the Masters and not get rattled, it's him. He's a California guy. He's just very chill in his caddy. He's very chill, and they just kind of very relaxed. Their business. Yes, very relaxed, almost like just in his own zen world on the course, and that's what you need. I will say this. I don't think DeChambeau can hold on. Scheffler will be in the mix. Will he win at that price? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. What I saw, I know Schauffele was a guy that we've taken before in the past or whatever. I dipped in again at 90 to 1 live. Now he's 40 to 1. And I'm telling you, he shook six shots back. And what I saw today in the wind was some beautiful golf, beautiful par saves. And watch out for a lot of these other guys that are getting no respect. Ludwig Aberg has played great golf, and he's kind of flying under the radar, 22-1 to live. I think he's also a very dangerous player here. This is going to be a great uh, Augusta game. But you know what they say, the Masters doesn't start till the back nine on Sunday. A lot of things can happen. Jordan Spieth put three balls in the water before. No lead is safe. But you're right about one thing. Scotty Scheffler, I don't know how he's not on page one of the leaderboard fighting for the Masters on Sunday. I don't know if he's going to win. I don't like the price. But I'll tell you, he'll be there. But I oh, think he's going to be win. close. Uh, he, he probably he, he could win. Yeah, I, I just say I wish I had him at a, a better number. But he's dangerous as hell. But Max Homa, uh, he doesn't look like he's going to go away. I think DeChambeau might fade, though. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I, I, it was funny. I said last night, I expect Max Homa to be in the final group uh, on Sunday. Shout out to everyone joining us on Sirius XM. So um, looking at the bottom of the board here. Dustin Johnson, complete waste of time. Yeah, whatever. Yep. I guess Janet had a nice red dress, though, so so what? Um, Paulina. Whatever, dude. <laughs> but, you know, know. Janet, Paulina, whatever. <laughs> like, you yeah. Know. Yeah, I don't care either. Is he's, <laughs> he's, he's such a waste of talent, this guy. I know. Like, basically, like, he's, he's the epitome of the live tour. Just give me the money. I don't care. And he even complained, well, if you have to work less, wouldn't you take the money? It's like you're not working, bro. You're playing PGA golf, and you're already a hundred millionaire, right? But no, no, like he doesn't. He never cared. He never has that killer instinct. That's why, talent-wise, I guess you could say he's, you know, he's got great talent, but he'll never be remembered as one of the great golfers or anything, right? You took the money. You got a hot girlfriend. Good for you. So, you know, um, Gabe, but you blow. I, yep. And another thing I want to say. Excellent point again. And. That's the thing. But I got to give DeChambeau credit and a lot of these other guys, like DeChambeau kind of wearing the flag for live and kind of a weirdo. And a lot of the guys, he's rubbed the wrong way. And he's really been grinding. So it's kind of interesting. We have Scotty Scheffler, who's like the king of the PGA Tour, and, and DeChambeau. And Rom was very close to not making the cut, but he went had a couple birdies late. He grinded to make make the, the weekend. So you're right. Dustin Johnson, I watched his play. It was disgraceful. But anyway, we're going to have a great tournament at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, some of these live guys have actually showed up. And uh, we're going to – hey, Tiger Woods, let's give Tiger Woods all the credit in the world. This guy's walking out there. He looks buff, whatever. He's there, man. He's like he t- – he's a top 30 player. Right? He made the cut. He made his money. I'm, he's not going to win this thing. But, Gabe, let's give credit where credit is due. That is a pure grind by Tiger Woods. 
A lot of the old guys played well. Yeah, I'm Tiger Wooded out already, and we're two days into this thing, so now I got to live another two days of it. Ah, you got to um, give him credit, though. You got to give him yeah, credit. Yeah, no, good for, for him. He made the cut. Yeah, All right. Yeah, he, yeah. He, made, he made the cut. No, he's played well. He's made the cut. Good yeah. for him. Jordan Spieth did not, which, you know, nope. that's pretty bad, too. Jordan Spieth, everybody always talks about, oh, there's one place he's going to play well. There's one this, and he could do that. What an absolute disaster for Jordan Spieth. Misses, misses the cut. Brian Harmon, complete disaster, plus yeah. nine, mixes the cut. Victor Hovland, just yep. complete disaster, misses the cut. A lot of big-time players really, really struggling. Wyndham Clark, plus seven, another yep. player. Sergio Garcia was a former champion that a lot of people like. Let's roll. Level three has begun. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabe Morenci, the pits, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between. It's a home run derby right now at Dodger Stadium. It's just one after another. It's 7 5 uh, right now. This game has sailed over the number. In game total is suddenly 16 and a half. We'll get you caught up to date with everybody that's hit a home run, but pretty much everybody has hit a home run in this game tonight. And it is now a tie. Uh, baseball game. The roller coaster continues seven seven uh, right now. As uh, this game has gone back and forth, as I stated, it's like a home run derby, and you just can't get in. It just the, the number just the, the the total sixteen and a half right now, and I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be betting the under no. of this game. Shohei Otani was one of the players that did go deep. The uh, the Pelicans the Pelicans were pasting. The Warriors, but the Warriors have gone on a run right now. There's under six minutes remaining in a basketball game. The Pels are up by five, 99-94. And let's give credit to the odds makers. They made the total 223.5 in this game before tip-off. There's 530 left in the game, and the in-game total right now is 223.5. The Pelicans are laying five and a half points. I think the Warriors could be live as they've been down all night, and uh, they're coming back. Uh, right now, Sacramento is up on the Phoenix Suns as the teams continue to jockey for playoff positioning. Uh, we've got the Mavericks and the Clippers. We know that that matchup is set. Everybody else is still figuring things out in the association. Meanwhile, the Edmonton Oilers lose to the Coyotes uh, tonight in overtime on a night that we basically officially find out that the Coyotes will be moving to Salt Lake uh, next year. The Edmonton Oilers trying to catch the Vancouver Canucks for first place. They'll play the Canucks on Saturday night. Edmonton did get a point. They're now three points behind Vancouver with a game in hand. Tony Finn will step up and then straight from the strip, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we'll kick it. We'll hit Saturday's Major League uh, Baseball card. Take a look at the uh, National Basketball Association. It's UFC 300 uh, as well. we got a stack card. It's the Masters, the UFL, and more. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Jason Tatum has games where he has stinkers. He shoots a four for 16. Jalen Brown in the playoffs gets exposed because he can't go left. Porzingis gets old. Sometimes Drew Holiday's not consistent. Al Horford father talks to catch up. That being said, I still think they're going to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I'm a Knicks fan. 
I hate the Celtics with all of my might. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Memphis owns it. They beat him five straight times, and Memphis is awful. So what does that say about the Bucs? They are the most overrated team in the NBA, hands down. Michigan and Boston College, there's going to be goals scored in this game. But, without being stated, the total's up to 7.5 right now. I got to go under 7.5 here, Scott. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. sort of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage, the Friday Night Freak Show. Hi, I'm Gabriel Morancy. We're in a level three right now. We're waiting on Tony Finn's going to step up, and then it's 4-2 for the Calgary Flames over the Anaheim Ducks. But if you have money on this game, and um, then we're going to advise you to call Gamblers Anonymous uh, right now. You've got a problem. Well, better, but, better leave, Gabe. Better give me that phone, because uh, that's me. <laughs> hey, 1-800-GA. Yeah, it's 4-3. The Ducks just scored again. Oh, my They're God. Back. Oh, my God. I had 4 nothing. I had 4 nothing. Oh, come on. Give this to me live, too, please. They just scored. They, dude, they just scored oh. two goals in the last two minutes. Thank and they just you. scored again. Thank the crowd's you. going crazy. The bench is yeah. all lit up. They're going to come back and win. Quack, 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 quack. Get on him with me. Come on, everybody. Let's do the Anaheim Duck. I, I, I bet the <laughs> Let's Ducks do the Anaheim Duck. Three and a, three and a that a dance? Too. Yeah, I don't know what it the is. Quack, All I know is they were down the duck quack. Game. I, I, I quack, 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 quack. I gave up. When it was four to nothing, I literally went, well, then it was four to one. And I'm like, eh, maybe. Then you said four two. And then you just said four three. Like, this is serious stuff right here. They were down four nothing going into this period. I, I didn't have the stones to take them live down four goals, but I think there's still life. 13 minutes left. They have a lot of time left to come back. Otani is up right now, seven seven. See if he can hit another home run. You said uh, only psychos bet this game, so I guess you're going to have to uh, leave it alone. <laughs> what a loser. What a loser Otani is. Oh, only oh, a double, got, not a home run. Oh, he only oh, doubles. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to say a single even. Oh, only a double. Okay. Yeah, big bust. Big bust. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> no, he's wow. got a home run tonight. He, no, he's murdering. I think he's three, he's three for four now. He's had another double. I'm telling you, he's leading the league in doubles. He's a doubles machine, this guy. Either hits a home run or he just rips it. Uh, he, he hits these line drives. So there's a double. There's one out. Otani's on second base in a 7-7 game. It's a fun rivalry, San Diego and L.A. And uh, the games were entertaining in Korea. We talked about it, too. Remember the, the game in Korea with Yamamoto, the second game? It was high scoring. And here we go again. We got another track meet going again. Man, the total was way too light uh, for this game. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights are pasting the Minnesota Wild, though. It's 6-2. In uh, in that game, all right. Here's uh, Freddie Freddie Freeman up at the plate uh, now. So yeah, four three. Wow, get this, Cam. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to jump mm-hmm. in actually. The Ducks are Please. plus four twenty five. Oh yes, and they're yes, only down I'm by one goal. I have the Ducks money line plus three and a half, two and a half, and one and a half. That's what I'm on, and I'm willing to go again, but. You know, I feel better for a team on this one because he, he, but then again, I'd also like Tommy to play the tape that said if anybody bet this game, they should lose their right to gamble or, you know, institutionalize themselves as a psychopath. 
and call Gamblers Anonymous. But you're in now. Well, now I'm go admitting Ducks. that I'm a degenerate gambler. Quack, 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 quack. Let's go, Ducks. I'm just doing this. I'm just doing this to support you. And to be honest with you, I have the game <laughs> on. Like there, I got the yeah. Dodger game here, I and I got know. the Duck game. So I got the, there's the two. I'm watching it in front of me. I'm like, well, they're coming back. And plus, you know how I feel about the Calgary Flames. I don't like them. So give me the Ducks. <laughs> yep, I'm with you. I'm going to be honest with you, Gabe. I stopped watching the game when it was four to nothing, and I'm not turning it back. Because the minute I change the channel, they've scored three goals. So I'm just going to be watching. Uh, I'm actually watching Clemson and Duke highlights right now in college baseball. I am not going to touch this damn Ducks game or whatever. I'm going to turn it to Golf Channel because uh, the minute I turn there's it a back, lot of gonna score. Mm-hmm. there's a lot of like DJ and hardcore stuff here to bet on right now. The San Jose Barracuda are winning two nothing over the Texas Stars. That's there's only three minutes left there. The San Diego Gulls. And the uh, the Ontario Rain. It's, uh, we got um, 3-3 hockey game there, but we're late. Anything early starting here? No, we're all kind of late here. Yep. Tucson Roadrunner is going to be the only. Uh... You know what? The Colorado <laughs> Eagles might be live in that game. Think about the Yang Tucson. Are they the only team in Arizona now that the Coyotes are They're the only pro so team now, left. Yeah, yeah they're, they're probably done, too. They're going to leave. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, what? Well, well, you go to another. You're in Ogden now. These poor Ogden bastards Roadrunner. in Tucson. Some kids losing his job now because his team's gonna move exactly. to like uh, Provo or something in Utah. I know, it's, yeah, Ogden. That's what I say. Provo, Ogden, wherever the hell. Yeah, Ogden. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're gone. It's like unbelievable, man. What a what a gong show that story is. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Think about this. If you're a player on the Coyotes, you're a young dude. You're going from beautiful weather, sunshine, wicked hot girls all over the place, party central, to Salt Lake City. This isn't a good trade-off. No, but you know what? There'll be a better hockey team. Less girls to look at, less fun at night, less whatever, more focus and attention to the game. There'll be a winning. For, they'll, they'll start to win more in Utah. You know what? They will actually, the owner, the owner of the Utah Jazz, you're right, he's going to... Uh, he can't be worse owner than the Coyotes owner as it is. So they'll be <laughs> they'll be in a new arena. Be, you know, there'll be eighteen thousand people. They'll be all gung ho. There'll be an enthusiasm about them, and they'll probably spend a little money in the off season on some free agents and stuff like that. So it's For true. Sure. You're right. I think Arizona will be uh, or the Utah, whatever they're going to be called, Grizzlies. I think the uh, the the um, the Yeti seems to be a front runner. Yeah. Is that what they're talking about? The Yeti? That's I can't I can't endorse that. That sounds stupid. Utah you actually Utah Yeti. Utah Yeti. Man, eh, you know what? Yeah, it's Maybe like a white like a, it's like a white snowman, like an abominable. Oh, I know yeah, I know a Yeti. Yes, yeah, Yeti is a Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Yeti. Yeah, I got it. it actually makes sense. Utah Yeti. It sounds better. You know what? The more I think about it, the more I like it. I'm buying in now. I first thought it was stupid. People seem to like it. They 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 they've they've had a poll up the owner, it's no secret the the owner of the Utah Jazz put a poll question up earlier in the week on his Twitter account and on they have a website, and he said oh if we're lucky enough to get a hockey team what should it be called yeah he knew all week like he's known all along, <laughs> right? nice. like it's if we're lucky enough it's like yeah and Batman gets mad about that stuff too unless something's for sure he probably did get mad at that, but it's done like I said it's been reported. And then uh, the Coyote players go and beat the uh, the Edmonton Oilers tonight. It's a crazy world. Underdogs really have covered a lot tonight in all the all the leagues. Like there's been big crazy comebacks. Underdogs have won games. Look at me, just uh, alone in the American League East tonight, guys in baseball. The Toronto Blue Jays were big favorites against the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies murdered them. Um, yep. The Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles were not favorites though tonight, which surprised me. And they had the odds makers were right. They were underdogs, which is rare. They were small home dogs tonight, but Baltimore got lit up tonight by Milwaukee. And uh, the Angels lit up the, the Boston Red Sox so badly that the uh, the Boston Red Sox fans at Fenway booed the Red Sox off the field uh, tonight. Going to be a long summer at Fenway Park for uh, for it's... Boston Red Sox fans. You're, you're a weekend. You're booing the team off the field. You guys suck. It's terrible. That's a real shame. I feel I feel terrible for you, and I you know I gotta be I'm honest, being sarcastic Dave, though. <laughs> I I, oh, I know you are, but I, I just just quickly too about Kevin Gossman here. Uh, 
His ERA oh, is no, 11. He's been terrible, too. Like, I don't know what now, the hell's like, up I mean, with Kevin Gossman. Yeah, like, I, I, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a Kevin Gaskin. It's two games in, and this guy has an ERA of 11 and a half. And he's 0-2. And, you're, and, you're, and the Rockies are hitting you around. Like, I don't understand what is up and down. Gabe, this is a real problem. Like, he's their ace. This guy's like one of the front runners for the Cy Young. It is a long season, but man. That is a horrible way to start. That's not just bad. That's epically poor. That's a really bad beginning. No, I had definitely higher expectations. I thought he was a Cy Young candidate. And like you said, he's getting killed early, early in the season. So, yeah, big, big upsets today and uh, and underdogs. So, going back at it tomorrow, Kramer's on the hill. The Orioles are minus 150 favorites against Hall and the Brewers. Uh, The Blue Jays get the Rockies again. And uh, the Blue Jays are minus 190 favorites against the mm-hmm. Colorado Rockies. Hudson goes for the Rockies. Francis is on the hill for the Blue Jays. The total is nine in you know that game. The Rockies are offer value. Hate to say it. The Blue Jays shouldn't be at that price, even against the Rockies. That's how sad. That, that's not. I would expect the Jays bats to show up tomorrow night. You, I would. Yeah, over maybe. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Jason Tatum has games where he has stinkers. He shoots a four for 16. Jalen Brown in the playoffs gets exposed because he can't go left. Porzingis gets old. Sometimes Drew Holiday's not consistent. Al Horford father talks to catch up. That being said, I still think they're going to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I'm a Nick fan. I hate the Celtics with all of my might. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Memphis owns it. They beat him five straight times. And Memphis is awful. So what does that say about the Bucs? They are the most overrated team in the NBA, hands down. Michigan and Boston College, there's going to be goals scored in this game. But, without being stated, the total's up to seven and a half right now. I got to go under seven and a half here, Scott. Pharrell, coast to coast. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers, it's automatic. It's every time, not not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this late sort night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Let's roll. This is Sports Range. I am Ranch, and we're kicking this the Friday night freak show. Uh, the the Coyotes are moving to Arizona, uh, from Arizona to Salt Lake. And uh, I'm looking for the poll question, actually, that they had up for their, their team name. Here it is. Chad's owner asked fans for uh, for team name. They said that it has to have, like, uh, it has to be a momentum builder, uh, they're stating. Names that have come up. The Blizzard. It's not bad. Utah Blizzard. I like uh, that's the old Toronto soccer, indoor soccer team, the Toronto Blizzard, North American Soccer League. I would, I would let them do it and then sue them personally if I own the Blizzard name. I just, I'd, I'd be waiting in the wings right now. I start, Don't you remember? I'd be voting for it too. I'd be voting. Name the team the Blizzard. Name the Blizzard. Name the Blizzard. And as soon as it's official, this an hour after it's official, they have their press conference. I'd contact them. Yeah. By the way. I own the Toronto Blizzard name, and uh, for the record, you're, you're gonna have to pay me. Otherwise, you got a problem here. Like, I love this. Remember, like, <laughs> remember the Cleveland Guardians? They're like a roller derby team. The girl yeah. said you stole my name. The Cleveland Guardians. Yeah. It's a roller derby team. It's like, guys, yep. like, come on. And she got money too. They gave her a couple of bucks. You get, you get some money for this stuff. But um, yeah, the Blizzard. It's okay. It doesn't pop. The Yeti. It's not bad, yeah. but. It's it just sounds weird. It looks okay though. I've seen a potential jersey. The Mountaineers, the Utah Mountaineers, the Utah no. Olympians. No. The other one is um, the Utah Stingers. No, that doesn't bring a lot of with bees. Me. It's a lot yeah. of bees there. There's a lot of bees in Utah. No, no, no. I'm dead serious. I'm dead. There's a lot of bees. There's no, a lot no, of bees. There. Oh, that's okay. why. Yeah. Well, I was, I was telling you the Sacramento. That's why team, another you know name is the mean? Hive. But they're not, you're not calling your team the Hive. The Utah Hive. The Utah Hive. What yeah, that's on the list. Man. The Utah Hive. That's yeah, horrible. the Stingers that's, at that's... least. Yeah, because they have oh. bees there, I guess, bro. So I'm oh, saying you okay. got bees, but. Stingers, I don't mind stingers. Like, yeah. yeah, it sounds like an indoor soccer team again. The Stingers. There's another team called the Stingers in the indoor soccer league. I know the there only. Is. I know there is. The only, no, the only team Stingers I know is the uh, University of Concordia Stingers. Concordia. Nope. There's another Stingers. I'm telling you, it was a soccer team. They were called the Stingers. And uh, it's funny you mentioned the River Cats of Sacramento. Do you know the Sacramento AAA team before that? It was Bees. Then it was Sacramento River Cats. You were right. so it's kind of weird. You know what? This is this is one of the top things too. They're going with the Utah Elks. Steal the CFL name. I have a problem with that too. You can't you can't do that. It's the state mammal. Fair enough, but nah, I you can't like... do it. There's a you did the Edmonton Elks like they just named their team this. Salt Lake, uh, the Salt Lake uh, Stingers. It's the B State you know Insect. What? You know what? I'm down with that. Thank you. Thank you. It's the Pittsburgh Stingers. Pit- we're our indoor soccer team. I knew it. I knew yeah. it. Yes. They're yes. long gone. Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't matter. The Blizzard are long gone, too. Blizzard Stingers are <laughs> long gone. gone. Yeah, I like Stingers. Salt Lake City Stingers actually sounds... It, it's, it, it's, it's Here's another one. They're going with the it. State Reptile. A Gila Monster. <laughs> yeah, they're called yeah the Gila Monsters. I, I, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that was their state reptile. Uh, so Salt Lake Gila Monsters. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, that stingers sucks. for me. Y- Yeti or stingers. Utah's uh, long history of professional hockey. Um, the the Golden Eagles began play in 1969. Played in the Western League before moving to the Central League, and finally the uh, the International League. Uh, the Utah Grizzlies were in the IHL. That's not bad. I, you know what? The Utah Grizzlies is the best one, I, I think. I agree. But the I, problem they with this, do? they don't own it. They don't own it. Like, just because the team, like, that's the whole point. Like, the team played there. It means somebody else owns that name, owns that logo, owns that brand. And another thing is, too, and Calgary scored. We're screwed. It's 5-3. Right. Uh, another thing is the um, teams, these teams don't like doing it. Like, remember the, the like the Cleveland Guardians name is lame. Let's just call it out for what it is. They could have called themselves the Spiders, which was cool, I think. The Cleveland Spiders. It was like an old, they, there was a team, a baseball team in Cleveland in the old days called the Cleveland Spiders. 
but they don't want to do it because it wasn't their, it's not them, right? They were like, well, we're, you know what I mean? They don't want to take a name that already existed from a team because it was a, it was an opposing team uh, from them. So they, they won't do the Grizzlies. They're going to come up with something. Uh, they're going to come up with something new. If you think about it, like the Colorado Avalanche, that is a good name. They were like, you can't be the Colorado Nordiques. They came up with a good new name. My guess is that there's coyotes in Utah. So I don't yes, know why. Just, you can just keep the damn name, too. That's Call yourself the, you know. That's what they're going to do. They're gonna, that's my no, they won't. Is they're gonna be, you, you don't think so? No, no. They want a so? new name. They want really? a new name. Did I vote for Stingers? I think Grizzlies. I'm looking at all their potential logos here. I'm looking. Uh, the Grizzlies is pretty cool. But it's just a ripoff of the Vancouver Grizzlies. You got a bear with a hockey stick in his mouth. Like, uh... <laughs> well, that's true. That's what they got. Like, <laughs> you've got a bear with a hockey stick in his mouth. <laughs> no, it looks all right, but it's like it's you, so you're kind of like you're, you're right. ripping off. Yeah, it looks yeah, too much. Like, I'm looking. I'm like, no, man, you're ripping off the Vancouver it. Grizzlies. And the, right. the NBA still own that name. Like the NBA will sue you. They'll be like, guys, you can't. No, you can't do that. You can't just completely copy us. The Utah Golden so the, Eagles, the U, the Eagles, they like the Eagle name there. And that's another thing. Do you call them Salt Lake or Utah? Well, that's my whole point. If it was Salt Lake, Salt Lake Stingers has Because then you come up it. with S stuff. Yeah, yeah, the Salt Lake Stingers. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Salt Utah Lake Sting. Would be... The Sting. Yeah. I think the Sting's better. That's a little soccer though. The Salt Lake yeah. Sting. It is. <laughs> Yeti it is. What a joke. I can't believe this is actually like, wow. Uh, people in Quebec City, like, there must be, like, just absolutely fuming. I can't break the bars tonight. When they when they read this story in the in their paper, they're just going to be smokes coming out their ears. This is unreal. Interesting. The uh, the survey's closed. The poll is closed. I wonder if Batman told him, hey, you don't even, like, what are you doing? Chill out. Cease <laughs> <Like, laughs> <you know>? action. <laughs> I, when I saw that, I was like, Batman's not going to like that. I know about how Batman thinks. I'm like, he's not going to like you did this. And then lo and behold, I just clicked. I was like, let me click the link. Click the link. It said, this page is, no, this poll is closed. Yeah, I'm sure That's it amazing. is. 9491 for Sacramento right now over over Phoenix. A wild baseball game at Dodger Stadium uh, tonight. 7-7 seven, seven right now in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Dodgers are minus 200 uh, favorites. Wow. It's uh, plus 160 for San Diego. And... What happened with the Oakland game? The Oakland A's were A's at one won. point 10, 10 to one favorites. I think they won two to one. I think yeah. they won two to one. Yeah, so they went two to one. They're now six and eight. The A's. It's not terrible, actually. Six and eight. Like six I said, people thought like people talk about them like they're the worst team in the history of baseball. They're six and eight, and they're big underdogs all the time. Except tonight, they actually were favorites. Six and eight is fantastic. Take a look at their win total. They're way above their average. <laughs> Are we nuts? Oh, they're on you know pace. What? Yeah, it's six and eight. Look at the Rockies too. Look at the Rockies. Okay, they're four and ten. That's different. They're still. We talked about that. <laughs> so that's. Uh... <laughs> no, the A's are better than a lot of supposedly good teams, like but by record. I like, put it this way: the A's are six and eight. The Blue Jays are six and eight. I don't want to upset yep. you as a Blue Jay fan, but the Blue I'm Jays actually, are I'm six be, and eight. I'm going to be honest with you, Gabe. I'm getting to the point where. I'm pretty sick of this franchise. I don't. Uh, yeah, they and I just know won a couple of games first. against they, Seattle. It's going back. And forth. Sorry. Nah, but this is my. This is the point that we talk about. You can't let Colorado walk in there and blow you out. You can't. They need to win tomorrow and Sunday. They need. They need to win the series. You got to win the next two now. You know, you, you win it two to three. Um, Minnesota is struggling. They're four and seven. How about this? The Houston Astros are now four and eleven. That's shocking. So they're, they, Oakland are better than they are. The Miami Marlins are two and twelve. Washington are now five and eight. The Mets are mm-hmm. six and seven. Uh, the the Central's not bad actually. Oh, now that uh, you know, Calgary Duck just score? scored again. It's no, it's oh, okay. game set match. Right, six right. three. Now there goes the <laughs> two and a half's down the tube. So the only one that wins is three and a half. That was a real big change. Great, good work, good work, Ducks. All that for nothing, jerks. Uh, a big surprise so far this year are the Milwaukee Brewers, although it's still it's still early. But the Brew Crew, they don't have a lot on offense. They let Corbin Burns go. 
people, they don't spend a lot of money. Like the Brewers are basically not even trying to win, and now suddenly they're winning games, right? It's one of these weird deals. But as I stated, it's still early in the season. Pittsburgh off to a great start at 10-4. and four. They'll regress a little bit. Cincinnati at 7-6 and six right now. The Cubs at 7-6 and six in the Cards. So there's not a losing, there's not a team with a losing record, actually, in the National League uh, Central uh, right now. So 7-7 seven, seven in this baseball game uh, still. Bottom of the eighth inning at uh, Chavez Ravine. And we'll take a look at Saturday's uh, card a little bit. We'll get you caught up to date with the Masters uh, numbers. And the UFC 300 card is here. We had Lou from Gamblu.com with us earlier tonight. And we were in agreement with a, quite a few of these uh, fights. And looking at the, the main event here, this is a fight that I'm looking forward to seeing. And I think that Hill is in a bad spot coming off of surgery and coming back a little bit quicker than he's supposed to due to the fact that they needed him on this card and they're paying him a lot of money to fight on this card. But Pereira is a killer, man. Like, we've seen what this guy does to people. He's he's messed up out of Sonya, then he moves up in weight, and he does the same thing to people. He's going to win this fight. I think the number is going to continue to climb before fight time. It's minus 140 now. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Jason Team has games where he has stinkers. He shoots a 4 for 16. Jalen Brown in the playoffs gets exposed because he can't go left. Porzingis gets old. Sometimes you holidays not consistent. Al Horford father time to catch up. That being said, I still think they're going to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I'm a Knicks fan. I hate the Celtics. Wait, all of my might. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Memphis owns it. They beat him five straight times. And Memphis is awful. So what does that say about the Bucs? They are the most overrated team in the NBA, hands down. Michigan and Boston College, there's going to be goals scored in this game. But, without being stated, the total's up to seven and a half right now. I got to go under seven and a half here, Scott. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
It really is amazing how history repeats itself on a nightly basis with the Sacramento Kings scores in their games. No matter what the score is in the first quarter or the second quarter or whatever, in the last couple of minutes of their game, it's going to be, like, close. And here we go again, 98-96 right now with the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix are plus 190 on the money line. I think that's a pretty live play right now, actually. They've been trailing all night. Now they're coming back. Plus 190. Sacramento minus 250. It's two and a half. Meanwhile, the L.A. Clippers and the Utah Jazz have got a really close one here in a meaningless basketball game. 105-104. Still 7-7 in the baseball game in Los Angeles uh, right now. The last Major League Baseball game of the night. The NHL card is done for the evening. It's on to Saturday, and it's a pretty busy Saturday as a whole uh, once again. You got Major League Baseball action all day. NBA uh, basketball is uh, is off on Saturday, which is bizarre. The, the schedule is extremely strange that they have no games, and then everybody plays again on Sunday, but the play-in is set to begin. Uh, we got UFL football during the day uh, tomorrow, and then the UFC, big-time card tomorrow night, UFC 300, 12 um, either current or former champions on the card. And this each fight has its own cool storylines in them. So we know that we know about Jamal Hill's story. The guy's a badass from Michigan. But if you watch the countdown show, and those countdown shows will mess this to your head, but you see the countdown show, he's like, you know, oh, it's so great. Now I live in Las Vegas and I'm living the dream. And they show him driving around in sports cars. And, you know, he's got, like, the – he's got a grill. And he's got, like, Rolexes and chains. Like, he's living the dream and stuff. And he shredded his knee playing basketball. So he's coming off of surgery. And I think he's lost a little bit of this hunger a little bit. Now he's coming back. And this is his first fight back against a guy like Alex Pereira that's just a freaking killer, killer, killer of a fighter who, to me, is always underestimated – the money is starting to flow in right now a little bit. The number is climbing, but Pereira, I do believe, is the bet in this fight. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Zhang and uh, and Yan here, we and uh, and X Zan here, the the first all Chinese championship fight. The favorite is going to win. This is a good parlay here, Cam. Minus four fifty with a football game tomorrow night. That'll be a centerpiece of a lot of parlays for me. And I'll lay the points as well, but just to take a little bit of the stress off, the Birmingham Stallions are not losing tomorrow night to the Memphis Showboats. So you just tag that in here at minus 310. And mm-hmm. even this one with with, uh, with Wee Zhang and, uh, and the Birmingham Stallions to win the game, minus 164. Also, Like I said, Bur- Birmingham are beasts. They're not losing to Memphis. And they're going to cover I love most your- likely. But Memphis don't love suck, though. That's why I'm just stating. Oh, but Birmingham are going to win. I think this is very important, Gabe. We forgot about this, too. It's been a long journey, and they haven't really talked about it. Do you know we have the NCAA hockey final tomorrow, but no one's really talking about it. It's at 6 o'clock Eastern, and we have Denver Futures at 9-1, to one, but Boston College is the favorite in that game at minus 300. Boston College is probably going to win that game, so that might be a parlay piece as well because I'm looking for something. I already got Denver Futures, so what's the deal? What are we going to do with this game? That line opened up at 260. It's up to 300 on my FanDuel book here. I don't know what it is in other places, but BC is a big favorite over the Denver, Denver Pioneers. But Denver's been good to us, and uh, we'll see. But if I got futures 9-1, to one, what do you do? We put a parlay together with Boston College to plus money and sit back and enjoy things. Yeah, you could hedge a little bit, but it's kind of tough. It's just Boston College, I'm seeing minus 270 on the money yeah. line right now. Man, Denver, Denver have been in every game that they played in, and it was a big win for them to beat uh, Boston University in the fashion that they did. It's kind of, you know, Boston College, Joe, are better. I think they're better than Boston U. They're just on a complete tear right now. Their goalie is a, a draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens, the uh, Jacob Fowler. The kid, mm-hmm. I, think they've won, I think they've won 14 games in a row now, Boston College. And if you look at Denver's run here, they that was one of the reasons why we liked them, Cam, to get to to the Frozen Four was their side of the bracket was a lot easier. Like one side of the bracket had Boston College and every Michigan team for whatever reason. Like they put Michigan State, Michigan, uh, Western Michigan, uh, Michigan yeah. Tech. All these Michigan teams were all in one side with Boston College, and 
if you look at Denver, Denver, like I think they would, they played Maine, they played Cornell. No offense to those, they're good, right? Mm-hmm. But then they beat Boston U. So I'm not saying it's a step up in class, but I, you're right. I do think Boston College are going to win. And even though Boston College is so powerful offensively, the total is six. I think it goes under. I think it'll be a lower scoring. We saw Boston College clamp down last night on Michigan and beat them 4 nothing, And they're hard to score on, Bob. Like, Boston College is that good. But listen, man, Denver are the champions from two years ago. All right? They, they won the championship two years ago. They're a perennial power, this team. They're going to be in this game uh, tomorrow. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that Boston College wins like, you know, 4-1 or something in the end. I think they'll pull away. I, I agree with you. And you could look at this. Uh, the, I, I think you're onto something with the total. I think you look at it both ways because on my mind, you could do the under to plus money at 5.5, but I'd rather have that 6 maybe due to a push and, and lay a little bit of juice. But I agree with you. I think Boston College is going to win the game like three to one. I think it goes under the number, and uh, I agree. I think the total is the way I'm going to play it, and I'm going to parlay it. Actually, that's what I'm probably going to do. Parlay Boston College to the under. So for people that weren't with us uh, earlier, Rob Vino was with us, and me and Rob went over all the UFL uh, games. We've done very well so far to start the, uh, the UFL season. We're 7-3-2. Uh, and two. It's annoying. We had two pushes last week. Uh, but it's a n- nice start, and we look to keep it rolling tomorrow. So the first game up uh, tomorrow is at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern. The D.C. Defenders are in Arlington, Texas, against the Renegades. The Renegades are one-point favorites. Total is 43-and-a-half. The Renegades, of course, were the XFL champions. They played D.C., actually, in the title game last year. And uh, the Renegades were the XFL champions, but they weren't great last year. They were four and six. They they got lucky in the playoffs and they won. They were the preseason favorites to win, but they really weren't that. You know, they you know they're they're good, but they're not great. But the odds makers ca- have caught up to this. But the thing is with Arlington here, Arlington have played the toughest schedule in the league so far. They had to open up the season against the Birmingham Stallions, who were the best team by far. Then last Saturday night, they had to go on the road to St. Louis and play in the Dome. There's 40,000 people there. It's rocking in that place, and they were in that game. So now they're back home here. D.C. played the last game on Sunday night, so it's a quick turnaround uh, for them. D.C. are much better at home than they are on the road. Their offense isn't that good. Their quarterback is mediocre. Uh, just see the Dodgers went deep, but there's an out here for Otani. I like Arlington tomorrow in this game, guys. So 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. I like the Arlington Renegades, minus 115 on the money line. And then 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night, the Memphis Showboats get seven against the Birmingham Stallions. The Stallions won by seven last week. They won by double digits in week one. Both games on the road, we should note. Now, in this in this UFL, some teams have a home field crowd and some teams don't. Right, you know, some cities support it, and some teams, some cities don't. Birmingham does, right? Birmingham have fans. They're the one team, and you know, they they had fans going to their games over the last couple of years because they're good, and there's no other pro teams in Birmingham, and they love football in Alabama. So uh, the Birmingham Stallions have a good atmosphere at their games. I'm looking for them to roll tomorrow night. The total is forty and a half. I think they're going to cover the number. I think the game goes over. And I love them in money line parlays, uh, Cam, tomorrow. I'm going to have Birmingham at the back end. In fact, I have a Scotty Scheffler to win the Masters parlay today with the Birmingham Stallions <laughs> to win the game tomorrow. Yes, I love it. Building the Scotty Scheffler house brick by brick. I got uh, <laughs> plus 160 at the time. He was plus 160. I was like, ah, I'm just going to take him parlayed with the Stallions. You got him Let's before. Go. You know what I've learned with Scotty Scheffler now, and this is the stupidest thing, and it's the opposite of the way golf is. You take him what, at just the start do it the before. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because now he's the, he's never he's always doing well out of the gate. He's like a horse that leads. Like no, like Rory's different. He's always like five shots back or six, and he makes that big run and comes up short. Scheffler always finds a way to be on page one of the leaderboard. So you could have got him at plus four fifty on top of stuff and now i'm regretting that because i wouldn't mind having that ticket in my pocket because unless he goes on a bogey barrage what how how bad live is he gonna get even when he's down like say say somebody like he finds a way not to play very well and, and you know somebody takes the lead like homa the worst he's gonna be 
two or three shots down is what, Gabe? I can tell you, two to one. Because that's the, everyone knows how good he is now. You're never going to get a good crisp number on him as you talk about. It's sim- simple. Hell, he could be five shots back, and you might only get him at four, like three and a half to one. That's how good Scheffler is. You know, it was crazy. He was he was a plus one sixty favorite today when he was one shot back earlier in the day. <laughs> he wasn't even it's winning, enough. and they were like, "Yeah, he's plus one sixty. And then after the day, they're like, "All right, plus one thirty seven." After. I do believe, like you said, Homa has the the composure and the personality and the game and the discipline to hang around throughout the weekend. I don't think he gets nervous or the moment becomes too big for him. Bryson, let's give him credit. He saved, you know, he's had some nice saves. He looks like a couple of times he was going to melt down and he didn't. So he's been hanging around, but... With that being stated, I don't think he's going to hang. I don't think he's going to be there on Sunday uh, still, but let's tip our cap to him. We talked about Homa. Homa's only plus 550 right now. Morikawa's lurking, Cam, at 14 to 1. I'm not on him, but he is lurking. Me neither. It's shocking, actually. Colin Morikawa had some of the worst form coming into the Masters, and that's what tells you about Augusta. Some guys just find it, and he's playing really solid golf right now. It's because his putter's been good. He's had a horrible putter all year, but I want I don't want Morikawa at 14. It's not enough for me. I'd actually rather have Ludwig of Aberg at 22. They call him Aubert, whatever. He's Aberg to me, 22 to 1. This kid's the real deal, Gabe, and he's not going away, and he's not afraid, even though young guys usually don't do well at Augusta. He looks very, very strong right now. No, that was my pick before. I liked him a lot. He was 25 to 1 before the tournament started. But what I don't like about it is the fact that nobody debutant. I don't know why they just don't say like uh, first time or rookie or something like that. But debutant, um, <laughs> <like> debutant. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Seems like it's a, a thing for like a woman at a ball, like a debutant's ball or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. First time. That's what that's what the debutant ball is when you meet your lady. Yeah, no, but if you're a dude playing and... golf, it's not a debut. Why don't they show yeah. up wearing a dress then? I don't know. Pat- at, the, at the Masters, fans are patrons. Would no back. They spin in. Make a stanza's date. You're going to spin in. You're going to back her in. Hold on. So, you how you the little, the little things about I Actually, I, I don't mind. That. Hey, debutante. No, you don't know debutante. Well. You're not a debutante. Yeah, he's, yeah, I like it. Anyway, he's playing well. Call it rookie. <laughs> First time? Uh, I don't know. There's going to be yeah, something. Yeah. I mean, first timer, rookie. Surprised they don't call yeah. it virgin, like, at this point. Debutant. Like, yeah, that's right. I like uh, that. Virgin. Master's virgin. Yeah, he's a virgin. <laughs> Master's virgin. That's the other one, too, is, like, fans. Why don't they say fans? Patrons. They're like, the, pa- oh, the patrons. Oh, they're patrons. Hey, the patrons are Patrons appreciate like- Patrons Come appreciate on. seeing Tiger Woods' patrons. greatness on the, you know, Jim, Jim, it's the... It's the seventeenth anniversary of Earl Earl Woods passing. It's a heroic part of Tiger. <laughs> I love Patrons. I what love. He's gone through. Oh, here, here we go. Patrons. Hopping right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Jason Team has games where he has stinkers. He shoots a four for 16. Jalen Brown in the playoffs gets exposed because he can't go left. Porzingis gets old. Sometimes Drew Holiday's not consistent. Al Horford father talking catch up. 
That being said, I still think they're going to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I'm a Knicks fan. I hate the Celtics with all of my might. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Memphis owns it. They beat him five straight times. And Memphis is awful. So what does that say about the Bucs? They are the most overrated team in the NBA, hands down. Michigan and Boston College, there's going to be goals scored in this game. But, without being stated, the total's up to 7.5 right now. I got to go under 7.5 here, Scott. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Um, So, yeah, I was talking about, like, they call them patrons. So what happened today? A guy got kicked out for running. I saw the clip, too. People speed walk. So you're, I guess, Cam, you're not allowed to run from hole to hole to get your position, right? You got to yeah. speed How walk. Old? So some dude actually decided to run today, and they took him down, man. So they, you, you think he was, like, trying to shoot the president or something. Like, they were flipping out. So, hey, whoa, 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 hey, hey, you can't run here. <laughs> I, I told you, Ratsy, they got regular cop guys who wear, like, white. Too many rules have, like, the there. State yeah, there's rules. But they also have, like, the snitches and the, the, the old guys in the green jackets. They hide it. Hey, you don't want to be doing too many things in the trees. or You got to be careful around I managed there, to know? get detained in a Buffalo Bills game. Imagine me at a Masters. Like, it wouldn't last. Like, I'd, I'd last, like, two holes. I'd be like, I'd be a handcuff. Right. What, 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 what'd I do? What, 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 what happened? Like, game, like, game like, Ratsy, over under one and a half holes, Augusta. That's the best. <laughs> It's too bad, too, because it's one of those places where I like the way it looks. I always look at it. I'm like, oh, it'd be beautiful. fun to play golf there. It looks oh, it's, awesome. It's but I don't want to actually it's... be there. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't have a desire because of that. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't want to deal with these people at, at Augusta. I, I, I understand, but I am going to say this. Compared to some more, like, uptight clubs, at least, like, they go with the sandwiches and the beers and whatever. Hey, they let the, they let the fans, patrons, walk around the place and stuff like that. It's, it's actually not yeah, as yeah. tight as you think. You just can't be wasted going down like slides and stuff like that. They don't like that, but you could have a good time. Like I've seen guys get tuned there and do stuff, but you just can't, you know, like slide down hills. Like, it's pretty cool. You could buy every item on the menu and it only costs sixty six dollars this year. Yeah. If you bought one of everything, you, you could yep. say, All right, give I me one it. one peach ice cream, one cent pimento cheese and one ice uh, egg salad, one beer, mm -hmm. one coke, one like one of everything costs sixty six dollars, but they gouge you for the ticket price, so everyone can get all happy about the stupid price of a sandwich. The tickets are extremely uh, expensive. They are, but you'd really enjoy the sandwiches. I know the what you like, and they're great sandwiches at Augusta. Top of the line, delicious. It's egg salad. Come on, I'll, you know, we'll, you know, other night, you're on your own later. <laughs>